box with the mounted wing are swift seen flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Work, work your thoughts, and therein see a siege. Behold, the ordnance on their carriages with fatal mouths gaping on girded heart floor. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back, tells Harry that the king doth offer him Catherine, his daughter, and with her to dowry some petty and unprofitable dukedoms. The offer likes not, and the nimble gunner with Linstock now the devilish cannon touches, and down goes all before them! Still be kind, you got our performance with your mind. <sighs> once more into the breach, dear friends, once more! Or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of a tiger. Ah. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard favored rain. Ah. Yeah. Then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let pry through the portage of the head like the brass cannon. Let the brow o'erwhelm it as fearfully as the Thagalan rock, or hang and jutting his confounded base. Yeah. Now set the teeth. Stretch the nostrils wide, hold hard the breath, and bend up every spirit to its full height. Ah! On, on you, noblest English, ah! whose blood is fet from fathers of war proof, fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn till even fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Yes! Ah! Dishonor not your mothers. No! Now attest that those whom you call fathers did beget you. Yeah! Yeah. Copy now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. Ha -ha. And you, good yeoman, uh -huh. whose limbs were made in England, show us now the middle of your pasture. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not. <laughs> For there are none of you so mean or base that you hath not noble luster in your eye. Yeah. Ah. I see you stand now as greyhounds in the slip, straining upon the stars. Yeah. Now upon this charge, Cry God for Harry! For Harry! England! 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 St. George! St. George! To the bridge! To the bridge! Stay, good corporal, stay! The knocks are too hot! For my own case, I am not a case of lives. The humor of it is too hot, that is the very plain song of it. The plain song is most just, for humors do abound. Knocks go and come, God's vassals drop and die. And sword and shield and bloody field doth win immortal fame. Would that I were in an alehouse in London. I would gladly give all my fame for a pot of ale in safety. As would I, if wishes would prevail with me, my purpose should not fail with me, but thither would I hie. As duly, but not as truly, as bird doth sing on bow. Ah, to the breaches, you dogs! And that you call ye? To mercy, great duke, to men of mold! Abate thy rage! Abate thy manly rage! Abate thy rage! Show lenity, sweet chum! These be good humors. Your honor wants bad humors. As young as I am, I have observed these three swashers. I am boy to them all three. But all they three, though they would serve me, could not be man to me. Three such antics do not amount to a man. But Bardolph, he is white livid and red-faced. By the means whereof he faces the now, but fights not. For pistol, he hath a killing tongue and a quiet sword. By the means whereof he breaks words, but keeps whole weapons. For Nim, she has learned that men of few words are the best men, and therefore she's loath to say her prayers, lest she be thought a coward. But her few good words are matched with his good deeds.
<laughs> I've been blue Ellen. You must come presently to the mines. The Duke wants more and speak with you. To the mines. Tell you the Duke is not so good to come to the mines. For look you, the mines is not according to the disciplines of war. The concavity of it is insufficient. For look you, the adversary you may discuss unto the Duke is date himself four yards under the counter mines. By Jesu, I think he'll blow up all if there's not better direction. The Duke of Westmoreland, to whom the order of the seeds is given, is altogether advised by an Irishman, a very gallant gentleman in faith. It is Captain Mac Morris, is it not? I think it be. By Jesu, he's an ass as in the world. I will verify as much in his beard. He has no more true directions in the disciplines of war. Look you, the Roman disciplines, it is a, a puppy dog with a tail called Quick's Defense. The the barley! Ah, how yet resolves the governor of the town? This is the latest parley we will admit. Therefore, to our best mercy, give yourselves, or like the men proud of destruction, defy us to our worst. For as I am a soldier, a name that in my mind becomes me best. If I begin the battery once again, I will not leave the half-achieved our floor till in her ashes. She lie buried. Yeah! The gates of mercy be all shut up, <laughs> while the flesh soldier, rough and hard of heart, in liberty of bloody hand, shall rage, with conscience wide as hell, mowing like grass, your fresh fair virgin, <laughs> and your flowering infant. <laughs> what is it then to me? If impious war arrayed in flames, like to the Prince of Thieves, do with his besmirched complexion, all feats in length with waste and desolation, what is to me if you yourselves are caught? If your pure maidens fall to the fort, to the hand of hot, forcing violation, what rain can hold licentious wickedness when down the hill he holds his fierce career? We may as bootless spend our vain command upon enraged soldiers as to send precepts of the Leviathan to come ashore. Therefore, men of our floor, take pity of your town and of the people. Whilst yet my soldiers are in my command, whilst yet the cool and temperate wind of grace or blows this filthy and contagious cloud of heady murder, spoil, and villain. If not, why in a moment look to see the blind and blank soldier with foul hand defile the locks of your shrill shrieking daughters. Your fathers taken by their reverend heads, their, their heads dashed to the wall. Your infants spitted upon pikes. Your the mad mothers with their confused howls do break the clouds and Herod's hunt bloody hunting slaughtermen. What say you? Do you yield and thus avoid, or guilty in defense be thus destroyed? No! Ah! Our expectation hath this day an end! The Dauphin, whom of succors we entreated, returns us that his powers are not yet ready to raise so great a siege. Ah! Therefore, great king, we yield our town and lives to thy soft mercy. Yeah! Uncle Exeter, enter our floor. There remain and fortify it strongly against the French. For us, winter coming on, sickness growing upon our soldiers, we'll retire to Calais. Tonight, in our floor, we will be the guests. Tomorrow, for the march, are we addressed. 